Comparison tables are a great way to help your visitors choose the perfect product, and they can dramatically improve the conversion rate for your affiliate website or e-commerce shop. And there are a couple paid plugins out there that can help you build comparison tables, and I'll link those in the video description if you're interested. But in this video, we're gonna build a comparison table with one of my all-time favorite free WordPress plugins, TablePress. First, we're gonna start with some simple styling tweaks to make sure that your designs don't look generic at all, and they really pop off the page. After that, we're gonna make sure the table is mobile friendly and displays the columns nicely even on small screens. And then finally, I'll show you how to add a sticky header. So those buy buttons are always in view, even if you have longer tables, they just stick right to the top of the screen, which will really improve your click-through rate on your tables. All right, let's get started. Okay, here on the front end, we have a pretty basic table press table, not much custom styling or anything here. And my main concerns here are that it's a bit generic. I mean, it's clearly table press. Um, it's a bit hard to read. You can't easily see that this column on the left here uh, is the feature that's being compared across both phones. Also, I'd like to maybe stick a buy button in here and the header itself needs some styling just to draw attention to this table. It doesn't visually stand out on the table. And finally, if we put this in mobile view, you can see that it doesn't fit properly in the screen. It scrolls off the edge of the screen and that's really not the behavior we want. So we're gonna fix all these things really quick with some CSS. First, let me show you the table design in the back end. In the back end here, you can see we have a pretty standard table. Uh, there's only two sort of modifications I've done beyond putting text in this table. Um, one is I put a call span on the table header and what this does is it allows one cell to stretch across the entire row of the table. And that's an easy trick to do. You and just to use a call span, you just put the hashtag call span in any of these cells that you want the call span to happen in. And then whatever is to the left of that will span across all of these cells. And number two, um, I've just put some images in these top two cells here. And this is gonna be the featured image for each product in my comparison table. And in this tutorial, I'm not gonna go in depth into how to use TablePress, uh, but I do have a complete tutorial that will show you how to add images and links and things to your TablePress tables. Just check that out right up here. And then the one other modification I'm gonna make is I'm gonna turn off the data tables features. I don't want a sorting or, any, or filtering in this table. And perhaps most importantly, make sure to add a CSS class to this table so we can style it separately from our other table press tables. In this case, I've added the CSS class compare, which will appear in the HTML code on the front end. Now, the first thing we need to do is get an idea of the actual structure of the table press table, as well as the classes that we have available to use that help us with our CSS styling. It really makes it easy to target the exact columns and rows we want. So to do that, I'm gonna right click anywhere on the table and go to inspect. And you can do this in almost any browser. I'm using Chrome. I'm just gonna scroll down here. And uh, you can sort of see the structure of the table. Here's the entire table. At the top, we have the table head right up there. Then we have the table body. And inside the table body, you have table rows, row, row, row. And inside a row, you have classes. And you notice that each row has its own class name. We have row dash two for the second row, row dash three for the third row. And then inside these rows, we have column classes as well. So column one, column two, column three. So that makes it really handy to target our styles at these specific rows and columns. Now, if you don't, if you're not using table press and you want to build a table, you can still do these same things. And I will try to put the helper classes in the, uh, in the video description, but basically you can write a slightly longer rule to do the exact same thing because your table probably isn't going to have these column classes in it. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is that I did add a class name to this table as well. You do this on the table press backend. Uh, there's just a little section where it says additional CSS classes, and I did add the class compare. And that's how we're going to target our rules so that they only affect the comparison tables. We're not going to affect every table press table on the site. Now, if you're wondering where to put your CSS code while we're doing this tutorial, the best place is right in the WordPress customizer. Just go up to customize, then go to additional CSS, and this is built right into WordPress. And you can add all your CSS rules here and you'll see the page refresh in real time as you add them. So this is just absolutely perfect. And then if you want, you can copy and paste these rules when you're done and put them in the table press back end so that these styles are only loaded when table press is inserted on a, on a page. So let's get some quick wins and write a couple quick rules here. So here's how almost all of our rules are gonna start. And it's gonna be table press dot table press dot compare so basically any table press table that is also class compare and then we're going to put our rules after that so for our first selector we don't need anything else and i'm just going to say uh, border one pixel solid ddd 
So I'm just gonna put a border that matches the same color as the border between the cells, just to help the table pop out from the background a little bit. Next up, I wanna put a background color on this first column here, okay? And that will help it visually stand out so it's obvious that this is the feature that we're comparing. So let's write a more specific rule. We're gonna start with table press dot compare, and then we're gonna be targeting the body of the table, not the header. And we wanna target any cell that has the class column one. And just for reference, again, if we inspect this here, you can see that it's the TD that has class column one. And actually we do need to put the no space between these two because it's the TD element that is column one, it's not the TD element that's containing column one. So there's no space between the element and its class name. And now we can write our rule. I'm just gonna say background color. Let's go EA, 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 just a kind of a medium gray. I'm also going to make the font a bit bolder. So we'll say font weight 500. And let's change the font size to 16 pixels. So it's gonna be a little bit smaller than uh, it was already, but we're gonna make the other body font or the other table font even smaller to help it fit on the screen better and be a bit more legible. Next up, I wanna write some rules that are only gonna affect column two and column three, and, but not column one. So basically whichever column has the data from the phones. And we could of course use the column classes, but I'm gonna introduce you to a CSS selector, which is called the not selector. So we're gonna select any column that is not column one. And here's how we're gonna do that. Start with our same rule, table press compare, and we're gonna target any TD element, which is the table cell element, colon not, so any table cell which is not, and then in parentheses we can write our column class, column one. So any cell that is not column one. And for our rule, let's make the font size even smaller. So we'll say font size, 14 pixels. And I'd like to see the text centered in these cells. So let's say text, Align center. And notice that align both the text in the center, but also the phone images as well. Next up, let's put some styling on the table header up here and help the table stand out a bit. So first our selector, table press dot compare. And we are targeting the TH element, which is basically a table cell that is in the table head. Now we only have data in one cell, but if we wanted to be more specific, we could say TH that is column one. So let's start with font size, 24 pixels. We'll add a bit of padding, 12 pixels on the top and bottom and 18 pixels on the left and right, just to give it some separation from the border of its container. We're gonna center the text as well. Um, you could easily give it a background. You could just say background, color hot pink or something, but I think I'm gonna give it a gradient instead. So let me just delete that. I'm just gonna paste it in there. So we have a bit of like a greenish to bluish gradient. Next up, I think we need more visual separation between these two items. So I actually wanna put a border uh, between the two of them. So I'm just gonna put a border left on this third column here. So we can read our rule, table press dot compare, and we'll just say column three targeting column three and we'll say border whoop, left one pixel solid and we could make it even lighter than the rest of the borders if we wanted or we could just make it the same now once we do this it becomes really apparent that the spacing isn't right on this table these two columns are not the same width and i think visually they do need to be the same width it doesn't matter so much this left column but we definitely want these two to be the same width so I would say approximately I want these two cells or these two columns to take up about 75% of the table between them. And then we'll have about 25% left over for this other one here. So we could write our rule, table press dot compare column two comma, because I want this rule to apply to both table press compare column three. I'm just gonna set the width of these columns. So let's say width 37.5%. So when you add that those together, that becomes 75% of the table, and this will now be approximately 25%. Now, next up, let's deal with the responsive features of the table. I want it to fit nicely 
on a phone screen. So there's a couple things you could do. You could wrap all the rows. So you just stack these rows on top of each other. I actually think uh, the data is small enough that we could fit both side by side on a screen. We just need to wrap this first column and have it uh, sort of stack on top of both column two and column three. So to do that, we need to write a media query. And basically these styles will only apply if the screen is smaller than a certain size. Uh, but it's gonna be a little bit tricky to write these and also show them to you at the same time when the screen is small. So I'm gonna write the rules at full width and then we'll just put them inside the media query after. And I'm just gonna write a comment here so I know that this is the start of the responsive mode. All right, so let's write a couple different rules. So first we want to make column two and column three 50% wide when the screen is small. So we're gonna write a rule and we can literally just copy this whole rule up here the exact same selectors, and we're just gonna change the percentage to 50%. And yeah, that's gonna override the styles that we had previously, but don't worry, we're gonna put that inside a MIDI query, and that's gonna uh, fix everything, and it will only apply to small screens. So that's step one. Step two is we want column one to become 100% wide. So table press compare dot column one width 100%. Now you'll notice it didn't go full width. It's not 100% wide. And that's because uh, on a table, you can't actually wrap your table cells to another line unless you change the display style. So we actually need to write a rule that applies to our table and say table press compare TD. So any table cell in uh, our comparison table will become a, I'm gonna say display inline block. And as soon as we put that rule in there, all of a sudden the, our cells are now wrapping to the next line. To add to that, I think we want our column one to be centered so it's more visible. So we're gonna say text align center for all our table cells. And now I think we're pretty close to the style we want. All right, now that we have our responsive view coded, we just need to wrap it in our media query to make sure it only applies to the smaller screens. So we'll just write our rule and it's gonna be and media screen and we'll say max width and we'll try 700 pixels, but you can use uh, whatever works best for your theme. It will depend on whether you use a sidebar and how wide your, um, how wide your content area is, things like that. And we're just gonna put uh, opening bracket there and then put the closing bracket uh, outside all of our rules and we'll just indent all this stuff one level. And now it goes back to the original styles that we set. So when the screen is full width, you can see that our table looks like our original styles that we wrote. And as we get smaller and smaller, we're eventually gonna hit the breakpoint right at 700 pixels coming up. And now it breaks into that two column layout and wraps column one. So I think that looks pretty good. And next up, we are gonna make a fixed header for this table that scrolls down, stays at the top of the page, and we'll have a nice buy button for each of these items just to help you optimize your conversion, get more clicks, get more sales. All right, just in the table press admin area for my table, I'm gonna make a couple of tweaks to the HTML code of my table. Uh, first, I put a span in here just around the verses in my iPhone versus Samsung Galaxy so I can add a little bit of extra styling there. And then I'm going to change the width and height of these images from 150 to 100, just to make a little more space for a button. And then I'm just gonna put a simple uh, link in here. So we'll say, and you would just put an affiliate link here and I can copy and just paste this here. And obviously you would put a separate link uh, for each of, these, each of these products. All right, back on the front end, we have our slightly smaller images and we've got our little links that we can turn into buttons. So back to our CSS here. And first let's make our buttons. So we'll say table press dot compare and we're gonna target um, row two. And we wanna target the link inside row two. So we're just gonna say the A element and we can just make a simple button. We'll say uh, yeah, background color gold, font weight bold, color black, and give it a bit of padding. So padding 
maybe five pixels and 15 pixels. Probably a little bit too big. Eight and two, and just a little bit of a border radius. All right, very simple buy now button. Next up, I'm gonna style my span in here, and we're gonna say in the T head, the span element that we put in there, and we're just gonna say color white, just so it pops a little bit off the page. And you could do something like, or something, just to give it a little pop. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, we're gonna do this fixed header scroll effect. And it's really, really simple to do. So we're gonna make this entire row, row two, be a fixed header. And all you have to do is, again, we're gonna paste in our tablepress.compare, and we're gonna say tr, so table row that is row two. And our rule is gonna be position sticky. And you also have to say top zero, which is where we want our row to be affixed to the top of the screen. And now when we scroll down the page here, it should stick very nicely right at the top there. So this is really useful if you have long pages or if you have long comparison tables and you don't want the buy button to scroll off the screen, you can just keep it right at the top there. And just one little tweak, you'll notice when you scroll down, you, we lose our border under here, and so there's not that much separation between the fixed header and our table. So we can fix that with a little bit of a box shadow hack. So we're just gonna write our rule. We can just add our rule here. We're gonna say box, box shadow. We'll call it inset, zero, minus one pixel because we want it to come from the bottom. And we could do just the same color as all our other borders. And now we have this little visual separation that helps make your uh, your table header pop out a little bit more. And you could even make it a bit darker if you wanted even more separation. Hopefully this video gave you a really solid foundation about how you can style table press and really make the tables fit the needs of your own particular website. If you're ready to keep on building, I think you should check out this video right over here. And uh, yeah, click that subscribe button too, right? It's right there. Thanks, see you in the next one.